back by absolute popular demand, You Should Grow series is happening right here. That's right, right here. And today, we think you should grow broccoli. Welcome to the Backyard Gardens Podcast. To have a good harvest, one must plant good seeds and must also use the right kind of fertilizer. The carrots have grown large and firm. How good they will taste. Welcome to the Backyard Gardens Podcast, where we talk about all things gardening. We are your hosts, Ben and Batavia, and you can find me gardening in the country. And you'll find me gardening in the city. Get ready as we dig deep into this wonderful world of gardening, where we learn to grow and grow for change. All right, real quick, before we get started, 25% off all t-shirts until June 20th on our link below. Spring BYG is the code. If you want to become a patron, thank you so much. We literally cannot do it without you. So thank you for joining. You will get two episodes a month, not aired right here. So there's that. All right, Batavia. We have recently dogged broccoli (laughs) into the ground like it's just this terrible thing. Mm -hmm. So are we prepared to talk about it like it's not terrible? I am prepared to uh, give it one more chance. So. I gave it 12 more chances, so but, there you go. No, the cool thing about this, and we talked about this in one of the after shows, like this is one of those uh, crops that you have to look, look a little bit more closely at if you are a home gardener, which we believe yeah. most all of our listeners are. So, yeah. Yeah, and I want to, um, so the criteria for this um, you should grow series. If you haven't listened to the first one, you can go back. There's a series of four, I think. And we're breaking down one vegetable and we're telling you when to plant it, how far apart to plant it, the companion plants, the faux plants, the pests, the diseases, how to harvest it, how to use it, and then special notes about it, stuff that we feel like is special. Um, so that's kind of the criteria we use for this series. And um, we have 20 minutes yeah. this year to do it. Versus, uh, we were at 15 minutes for these episodes last year. So, yeah, I feel great about yeah. it now at 20. You feel great, yeah, because we had a hard time getting through it. <laughs> but let's not waste any time because oh. the clock is a ticking. Oh. So, do you want to start, or do you want me to start? Um, I will start, and I have. I'm going to be looking down at my notes on my phone, um, which is like at I don't know, like. 10 font or something and I really needed to be on 20 font so you'll see me squint as well (laughs) (laughs) so so first broccoli is a coal crop or we oftentimes say a brassica Um, it is as far as when to grow it really loves cool weather so it's considered a cool weather crop Um, there are opportunities for broccoli to germinate in as low as 40 degrees. Um, I found, although I don't know if I've really tested that, but I believe it. Um, it will germinate better if the soil is a a little bit warmer. Um, you can start seeds indoors as I've attempted to do again this year. And I'm certain that my uh, brother here, Ben has done as well about 60, six to eight weeks before your average last frost. And then I have, um, and this is questionable, so you can provide some feedback on this. About two to three weeks in the fall before your average first frost. I think it needs to yes. be earlier than that. So, yeah, I read six to eight weeks for starting seeds before your last frost date. And I do mine 16 weeks before because it warms up so fast mm-hmm. that it'll bolt. So... Um, the guidance that I got in my state for my zone is to get them in the ground around, um, the middle of February to the middle of March Mm -hmm. to give them enough time. So they're one of those that can really take a cold. They can take a good freeze too, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if they're established, if they're established. Yeah. Let me correct myself. Starting seeds indoors, six to eight weeks in the spring before the average last frost, sowing seeds outdoors. That makes more sense. Two to three weeks before your average last frost. That makes more sense if you're sowing them outside. But to your point, you and I both are in a position where my average last frost is in mid-April. If I start my seeds at the beginning of April even, 
I'm not going to make it through to be able to harvest before like summer really hits and the weather just gets too hot for that particular vegetable to perform. And that's not even why it's on potentially our hit list for home gardeners. Right. But that's just kind of the way things roll. All right. What do you have on when to grow? Anything to add there? Um, no, I think I pretty much did. I just, one thing I want to note is it's very susceptible to heat to make it bolt. So it bolts, it gets bitter. So I would play with that planting time in the spring mm-hmm. and I would be, I would not be scared to get it outside. Um, and I'm not joking weeks before your last frost date. Mm-hmm. I would not be scared to do that because like I said, if it's established, it will take, I've had some outside now they're real small and they've done fine through mm-hmm. some frost. So how many leaves do you consider established? Five, six, seven, eight leaves on the plant? No, I don't consider that established. I consider how long it's been in the ground established. So mm-hmm. when you get it in the ground, the roots have had time to leave that initial, we'll, we'll call it a root ball that you had in your pot. So when it leaves that root ball mm-hmm. and it starts to spread out, I don't know how long that is, but you know, just give it a little bit of time. Sure. Um, and you, as long as it's a strong plant too, that's the other thing, you know, strong plant and it's got its true leaves. I would say probably it's on its second set of true leaves at minimum. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's what I would say. And a light protection will help get through those, you know, covering them with yeah. a sheet or something like that will help. Yeah. Okay. Which is why we've decided to do these right now. Yeah. All right. So we have planting space. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, okay. I'll take that one too. Uh, So this is part of the hit list. Um, I have seen as a part of square foot gardening and in other places, planting a single plant in a square foot, you know, so they're about 12 inches apart. Um, My recommendation would be minimally 18 inches apart. And if you can space it further, if you go up to two feet, 24 inches, that'd be great. Um, But based on a lot of our space, I think we're trying to kind of pile things in. So I'm going to settle on 18 inches. Um, And then when you're planting them, if you have them as starter plants, whether you've started them or if someone you've purchased them as starter plants, you're just basically going to plant the plant up to the soil level. So you're going to put the plant inside of the garden bed or container and then basically at the soil levels where you're going to stop it's you're not burying um like you would a tomato stem or a tomato plant that's what i'm trying to get out there yeah yeah i actually um so i was generous on this one and just so you know um the patrons know this this is a crop in one of our podcasts that kind of set us off to do an after show Mm -hmm. because we kind of ended up building a whole conversation around broccoli and it was due to the spacing. Yeah. Um, I, I averaged the numbers in and I gave it 15 inches. And then also, um, but I would easily go 18, no problem. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't give two feet because I feel like that's just a waste of space mm-hmm. for one broccoli head. Um, and then I, I actually plant mine a little bit deeper mm-hmm. because I found, and when I said, I mean like a quarter to a half inch up the stem, not much, but I found that when I plant them, they get weak at first and they'll flop over. And then what happens is the stem will start to curl. Mm -hmm. And so by giving it a little bit extra support, I feel like it helps. But I mean, a lot of these, we did both research and real world experience with these. So we're kind of combining it and we're compiling it into what we think because there's no really hard and fast rule. Yeah. I would say. Yeah. One thing to note when it comes to planting and this is, really kind of your leafy greens, especially those in the brassica family. I have found, um, and I call them roly polies. There's, I think pill bugs is another name for them. I could be getting my, uh-huh. my pests mixed up, but I'm going to go with roly polies because that's how I grew up, um, referring to them. If there is, if the leaves are touching the soil, I have actually seen this happen over and over again. You'll have the plant be attacked by those roly polies and just start eating away at those leaves. And so, um, and those very lower leaves, like you don't want to strip your plant down because that young plant is, you know, you're going to need those leaves for it to continue to grow. Um, however, it's okay if, you know, you want to pinch those off if you have other leaves in the plant. So I said that to say, like, I get the idea of like trying to give the stem some staying power by planting it a little bit deeper. So I could, I could see that. Yeah, that's just experience that I've come up with. Mm -hmm. All right, so companions. um, I'm going to run through these quickly. It's um, their companion planting. I'm going to pull out my trusty notebook here. Uh, Beets, 
or go, go well with them because they don't use the calcium that the um, broccoli needs. Mm-hmm. Lettuce. So this is kind of like whatever, but <laughs> broccoli will shade the lettuce. So when it gets warmer, it will keep it from bolting mm-hmm. and being more susceptible. But, you know, whatever. Uh, potatoes, they actually use the opposite nutrients as broccoli. So you're kind of getting the biggest bang for your buck out of that. Mm-hmm. Rhubarb, if you decide to grow it, uh, don't know a lot of people that do, but you know, strawberry rhubarb pie is delicious. It releases an oxalic acid to deter white flies from it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then rosemary actually repels the cabbage moth. So throughout this series, I did notice that rosemary kind of popped up a lot because there is a common pest. But um, and rosemary is actually a perennial. If people don't know, um, especially if you live in a warmer climate, mm-hmm. I used to have a rosemary bush in my yard that was about eight feet high and about six feet wide. So it was, it was plenty big. Um, so the foes for it, which are just plants that it doesn't get along with, mm-hmm. um, brassicas is really what it narrows down to from what I've found. And that's just because they all are heavy feeders. They require a lot of um, nitrogen because they're creating the um, the leaves. Mm-hmm. That's what we eat for most of them. And broccoli kind of does too. And then I just kind of broadly narrowed it down. Almost all summer vegetables are <laughs> foes of it. I mean, it's, it's a very unfriendly crop. Yeah. And I've noticed that as I go through... My um, and I'm making my garden plan. I've noticed over the years that like you you can't you can almost put nothing next to it. Mm-hmm. And I mean, you know, lettuce and beets are fine, but you know, you want to kind of get creative and you're looking to mash in some space and make some room. And it gets broccoli is a very difficult one to deal with on that aspect. Yeah, I think um, so. Kind of inserting some real world experience now. Keep in mind that when we talk about foes, in some instances, year one, you may experience problems if you put kind of foes together. And then you could also not experience problems in year one. But again, sitting in that same soil, year two could be a problem. So that's I'm prefacing that because last year I grew two broccoli plants kind of side by side in a raised bed. The next plants over were cauliflower. Next plants over were cabbage, actually. Um, so those clearly are both parts of the brassica family. And while the broccoli did end up bolting, um, I don't consider that bolting. I mean, it's the heat of the summer. It's nothing to do with them being, yeah. uh, you know, a part of the same family. Now, again, go back to what I prefaced. I could have a problem with that next year because, again, that that bed could be considered depleted if I don't amend it and so on. So the only other thing I noted was I'm going to add lettuce to the companions. Or sorry, um, what's my note here? In addition to lettuce, um, I had radishes. And it's under the same guise of lettuce. Like, it's not going to do any harm. So it's not like it necessarily yeah. adds anything to it. Like, it's that whole shade of the plant. Um, but yeah. I did read that um, onions can give broccoli a better flavor. I don't, I've not experienced that. Yeah. So I just want to preface this. I went through some trusted sites too, and I didn't put that bullshit down because <laughs> I, I'm not going to grow broccoli and onions one year and then broccoli and whatever the next year and taste the flavor. Like, that's ridiculous. So, um, in my mind, moving forward, like, I eliminated that completely mm-hmm. out of my list. Like, if it said that, I saved the pen and paper. What, what happens was not- when someone's like, I have, again, one plate of broccoli that was grown by itself and another plate of broccoli? I'm curious about that. I'm not going to say that I'm going to make a garden experiment out of it, but we can move on. Um, ready to go? We have to because we're running out of time. Yeah, I was just looking. <laughs> ready to go to <laughs> pests and diseases. So, I'm going to zip through these aphids. Cabbage loopers, stink bugs, and white flies would be considered pests. Um, Cabbage loopers generally are my number one pest when it comes to my brassicas. Um, And then aphids are problematic for me as well. Uh, Then diseases, and these are really all funguses. Uh, Club root, as well as mildew, like your powdery mildew or downy mildew. Uh, White rust. And then I did have in one of the um, the places that I searched nitrogen deficiency, which I don't, I wouldn't consider that a disease, but I think it's really critical to your earlier point when it comes to planting like plants together um, and kind of how these are going to suck up 
you know, the nutrients from that particular garden space, bed, you know, yeah. rose, whatever have you. Um, well, the problem is, is if, if, you know, most people don't just grow a bed of broccoli and then walk away for the year. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You're going to be putting something behind it and then that's going to require nitrogen and well, as well. Yeah. And nitrogen is water soluble, so it can actually wash out of your garden bed, unlike the other nutrients. Mm-hmm. So it's best to really amend hard with nitrogen if you're going to do a brassica heavy bed. And I mean, yeah. I'm talking about pretty hard. Yeah. Because nitrogen creates leaves and for everything except for broccoli and broccoli falls in the same family, they're all going to create leaves and you're going to eat the leaves. So create more leaves. Mm-hmm, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? My, and the um, only pest I got different was root maggots. Oh, gosh. I didn't write those down. And that makes me gag. I almost threw up just saying yeah, it. No, I didn't see that, but it does freak <laughs> me out. And I'm glad I didn't see it. Um, so I cover my, I, again, I'm a fan of this. I cover the places that I plant brassicas like broccoli. Um, and that helps with things like it minimizes aphids early in the season. I still get them yeah. later on in the season. Like by fall, if I'm planting again, I'm going to have them in that bed. But it absolutely does help the cabbage looper, cabbage worm, you know. Um, and then some of the funguses like crop rotation. I know. I know it sounds like I flip flop on this, but I don't want to take the chance. <laughs> so I do move, try to move my brassicas year by year. Um, and then then kind of some of your mildews like some of this is just the cleaning cleanliness of the bed you know of the place you're growing in make sure that you're you know cutting back dead leaves and getting all of that stuff out of your garden if it's uh not serving it well well i definitely would not vote for you for president because you flip-flop on that so much just for that one reason all the time it's you know it's a tough one and if you you know if you want to go back and listen to what we have to say about companion planning we have a whole episode about that Mm -hmm. And we also, never mind, I was say we don't have an episode about what I was going to say next, so we'll hold off. <laughs> we don't have one yet. Um, yeah. mm-hmm. Not yet. But so harvesting, mm-hmm. um, you, I don't practice this, but I guess I should. And it makes sense. Harvest in the morning. Uh, if you see yellow petals at the bottom of it, then you need to harvest it immediately because it's going to bolt. Um, take six inches of the stem with you. And then here we go. It's going to grow side shoots so you can grow it for side shoots and get them if you'd like. But I'm going to I'm going to get on my soapbox for about 30 seconds. This thing is a space hog Mm -hmm. and the side shoots are not going to feed you. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, like, I've never had enough side shoots to be like, oh, thank God I left this in and use a space. Like, I've never had that. So if it was winter time, maybe, and I couldn't get anything in because of how I can grow in my area, then I could possibly do it. But like in the spring, like not nah, get it out. And Cut you're leaving out. for that. You'd be leaving the plant in place. You know, we've kind right. of talked about some some trouble with this plant. So that plant's still going to be, you know, taking out of that soil. Right? Um, right. And not to mention if it brings on some disease and so on. So anywho, off with yeah. the side and shoots. And I mean, <laughs> off with the side shoots. But you harvest it in the morning because, and this is for most brassicas, um, it sucks up the water Mm -hmm. and then it'll be nice and plump in the morning. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to get all of that moisture and a better head of broccoli out of it. And um, and that goes with taking the six inches of the stem. It's the same thing. It'll store the water within the stem to help keep it fresh longer. So, and I mean, think about the grocery store. Like I always use this, but think about it at the grocery store. When you go, you always get this huge chunk of stem that you're not going to eat. And hell, now when you go to the grocery store and you buy frozen broccoli, it's almost 98% that stem. <laughs> There's not even the florets in it. Like I'll use that term, florets. Uh, yeah, sure. So just think about that as you, you know, when you're going out and harvesting. So real quick, you um, want that head to be firm, you know, so that's a sign of it mm-hmm. being time to harvest. Once they start separating, the next step is the flowers. And that's, I mean, yeah. it's, it's done at that point. I actually break off the stem in the grocery store because I don't want to pay for it because most of the broccoli I get is by pound. So I break off the stem, mm-hmm. you know, like, I'm just leaving pieces of stem inside of the grocery store yeah um obviously you can cut it if you cut it really finely it's still enjoyable yeah um and then uses i mean basically you eat it you can eat it cooked raw cooked steamed broiled casseroles i mean there's a whole lot of ways you can freeze them Mm -hmm. for storage you know longer storage you can do that you could dry broccoli if you wanted. I have not had canned broccoli, and I don't think I would go down that path personally. Mm-hmm. But um, give it a shot if you want, but I'm not sure about that. 
And then going into s- special stuff, do you have anything? Um, I think you're going to give some info on nutrition. Yeah. Yeah, that's your jam. Yeah. No, that's all I have. Yeah. So the nutrition, um, the only thing I'm going to do for this one is I'm just going to highlight the important parts of it. And it's vitamin C. It, it gives you one cup of broccoli, gives you 70% of your daily um, values. And same with a K1 vitamin. And it's high in folate, potassium, and iron. So it's a nutrient packed. I mean, it's, it's one of those veggies that oftentimes when you have like a really strict regimen for a diet, you see that as the veggie that people sub in. And it's, it's for exactly what you described. One fun fact, though, and I had never heard this again, trusted site. Broccoli was originally eaten for its stems. Like makes sense. It's a lot of stem. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, if you think about it and you're growing it, you spend all that time, like you're going to eat every single mm-hmm. part of that plant. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of stem on there. Yeah. So, you know what? I'm going to start eating the stem. I'm going to cut the whole thing off from the dirt and I'm going to eat the whole damn thing. <laughs> That's what I'm doing. I support you. All right, everybody. Batavia supports me, so I know that I'm good. Everybody, we love you. Thank you so much. We are out of time. Next week, we are going to be talking about charred (laughs) tell them something good see ya we hope you enjoyed today's show please follow us on youtube at backyard gardens tv instagram at backyard gardens tv over on our website backyardgardenstv.com and then we have patreon at backyard gardens and don't forget to check out our links below to help the show thank you so much for joining us as we learn to grow and grow for change cut Now you know why people feel like celebrating at harvest time. All over the world, people have feasting and good times when the crops have been gathered in. Hey, everybody. Thanks for checking out the Backyard Gardens podcast. If you like what we're doing and you want to continue to support the podcast, head over to our Patreon page to sign up. You can also make a one-time donation using PayPal. Both of these links are in the description. With your support, we can continue growing and helping others in their gardens. See ya. If you guys want some Backyard Gardens gear, go to the link below and check out our t-shirts, mugs, pint glasses, and other gear. All purchases go towards helping to support the show, so thank you so much in advance, and we hope you enjoy. We want everybody to have a garden, and we're going to give you a chance to win free seeds every month. Head over to BackyardGardensTV.com and enter your email address to be entered in all of our giveaways. Good luck! We want you to be a part of our gardening community. DM us a picture of your garden at Backyard Gardens TV on Instagram, and we will share it with our listeners.